Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making a really easy two ingredient marshmallow bark. It's almost Easter, so we're gonna make this for Easter. And I decided to do this one because Alex said a lot of folks really don't have as much time this year as they want. And I was kind of looking for something easy that you can do with the kids. Now, I've got all kinds of Easter videos and candy videos. If you wanna do some homemade candy for an Easter basket, I'll link all that stuff in the description of this video. And I'll also put some end cards in it so you can find some of those videos. But the only thing you need to make this is 12 ounces of white chocolate. And I use these Baker's Bars because they're really good chocolate. You can also use the um, morsels, like the white chocolate, chocolate chips. Those will work. Just any kind of white chocolate. You could even use white chocolate candy bars if you wanted to. And four cups of mini multicolored marshmallows. Now, if you were doing this for another holiday, like um, maybe Halloween or something else you could make it with regular chocolate and white marshmallows if you wanted to and optional stuff is a tablespoon of coconut oil or shortening you don't have to have this but it's going to make your chocolate easier to melt and it's going to make it a little easier to handle so i do like to put it in there but if you don't have it it's not a big deal and you just need about a tablespoon and I have some little sprinkles that I've put on top of mine. You don't have to have the sprinkles, and you can use any color sprinkle that you have. All we're going to do is melt this in the microwave, and um, I have a melt button on mine. If you're doing it in a regular microwave on high, you want to do it for one minute and then do it for 10 to 15 seconds after that first minute. So I'm going to get this in and get it started melting. Now, if you don't have a microwave or you don't want to use the microwave, you can melt it on your stove on really low heat, or you can melt it with a double boiler or just put two pots together and put some water in the bottom one and put your chocolate in the top one. It's easy to melt chocolate. The key with this is you don't want to get it too hot. If you get it too hot, you're going to melt your marshmallows and just mix your marshmallows in with your chocolate. So you definitely don't want to get it too hot and if you're melting it in the microwave be very very careful because it's easy to overheat it and if you overheat it it's going to turn into a gooey lump and you're never going to be able to get it smooth so definitely watch your time if you're doing it in the microwave and don't overdo it after the first minute you do want to take it out of the microwave and give it a stir and i know it's not very melted after a minute um but it is starting to melt and stirring it is going to help it melt without overheating it so go ahead and take it out and give it a little stir and then put it back in like i said not more than 30 seconds at a time every 30 seconds or so take it out and give it a stir and you can see it's melting a little bit more and you want to use the heat in your bowl to kind of help melt it because like i said we don't want to get it too hot that's more crucial with the marshmallows than it is in other maybe microwave chocolate candy recipes when you're mixing those marshmallows in the heat is really really important okay about 30 more seconds if you put it back in the microwave um, to finish melting it it will be a little bit faster than stirring it like this and melting it but if you do that, you're gonna have a hard time with your marshmallows and not melting them and just turning it into a marshmallow chocolate mixture. And that's not what you want. You want it to stay separate so that you've got the little marshmallows in the chocolate. And if you do that, if you put it back in the microwave and get it hotter, you're probably gonna have to put this in your freezer instead of in your refrigerator and you're going to have to mix it super super fast once you add the marshmallows otherwise they will just mix right in but if you do it this way and just barely melt the chocolate then you don't have to worry about your marshmallows melting into it and it just turning into a lump of goo 
And you also don't have to worry about overheating your chocolate and turning it into a lump of goo. All right, I've got it all pretty smooth now. You can see there that it all melted. And all you want to do at this point is just stir your marshmallows in. And you can also see the shine that that coconut oil gives your chocolate. And I always do that when I'm doing any kind of melted chocolate candy. I always add the coconut oil because of the shine it gives it. It just makes it look better. And you want to mix these marshmallows until they're all well coated. And that looks pretty good. You're going to have, of course, the, the chocolate's going to run back down in the bottom of the bowl, but that's okay. And you want a 8 by 11 pan about for this. And I've got one of these little glass pans here. Line it with wax paper so you can get it out when it's done without having to wrestle it. And just pour your chocolate marshmallow mixture in the pan and get any of that chocolate that's in the bottom there out. Now this is a pretty sweet recipe. I mean, this is not one that I'd make for a low sugar crowd. If you use the white bacon pieces that are not real chocolate, they have a lot less, a lot fewer calories in them. But, you know, if I'm going to eat candy, I prefer to eat the real stuff and just not eat as much. And you just want to spread this out all the way to the edges of your pan. And these little spatula spoons work great for this. Make sure it's all solid. You don't want any holes in it. And when you get it all spread out nice and even there, if you want to, you can put a few sprinkles on top of it. Now, if you add sprinkles, of course, you do want to add them while the chocolate is still wet like this is now. You don't want to wait. And you can see that my marshmallows are still nice and firm because my chocolate wasn't too hot. That's really what you want. You don't want to overheat the chocolate for this. Okay, that's pretty good. And just sprinkle a few sprinkles on if you want. If you don't, you certainly don't have to add them. But if you're making it for Easter, it does add a little bit of color to it. I probably would not let Charlotte do this because there would be more sprinkles than there was chocolate. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's a good job for the kids. Let them put the sprinkles on. And then all you're going to do now is put it in the refrigerator until it's nice and firm. You can put it in the freezer if you want to. But after it's cooled and firm, then you're going to take it out of the fridge and bring it back to room temperature, which is what I've done over here. So this has already been in the fridge and now it's back at room temperature. And you can see it's nice and solid. And the marshmallows are all intact. Now you can cut this one of two ways and it is pretty sweet. If I was gonna cut it, I would cut it in pretty small pieces. Um, because it's candy, it's not, you know, Cut it maybe like you would do fudge. And it would be pretty in just a little box or a little bowl. Something, a Easter treat maybe you could share. You can also take cookie cutters. And I'm hoping that these plastic cookie cutters will work in this. If you're doing it for a holiday like Easter, you can use cookie cutters that are kind of for the season or the holiday that you're doing it for. And of course, you can save the extra that's around the edges and serve that broken up in a bowl or on a plate. I don't think my cookie cutters are quite as deep as my bark. But you can see how this would be a good recipe for the kids. And it's a really quick, easy Easter treat. 
something maybe if you're going over to somebody's house for dinner or maybe you're looking for something that you can take to church and share on Easter morning with your Sunday school class or something. This would be something quick for that. Yep, my cookie cutters are not as deep as my bark. We've got a couple here. We've got a heart and a cross. And because it's Easter, I wanted to take the time to share John 3.16 with you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. With times being what they are, I cannot imagine dealing with the way the world is, dealing with all of the problems and the stress and the shortages and just everything that is going on right now. All of the threats and all of the insecurity and all of the turmoil without having Jesus as my Lord. And I want to take the time to share exactly how you can have that because it is Easter and that is what Easter is all about. It's about the sacrifice of God's only Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. And it's about us giving our heart to His Son. You can have peace that passes all understanding. You can have hope and comfort, protection, provision. You can know what real, true love is. A love that would cause a father to sacrifice his son. You see, it is simply as easy as believing, asking, and giving your heart. And it doesn't matter who you are, what your situation is, what you've done, how many bad things there are in your life that are keeping you from the cross, that are keeping you from knowing God's love. He doesn't care. Jesus did not make that sacrifice for perfect people. He didn't make that sacrifice for people with whole hearts. He made that sacrifice for people who were struggling, for people who were desperate, for people who were imperfect and who had sinned. God's Word tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So every single person who has ever gone to the cross and given their heart was just like you are. And it's a matter of believing. And I know it's hard to believe that somebody, especially God, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-seeing, could do anything in the world, created the world and created you, why would He sacrifice Himself for you? Why would He die for you? That doesn't make any sense. But you simply have to choose to believe it. And when you think about it, it's no harder to believe than the alternative. I mean, if you look at the alternative that the world is teaching, billions and billions of years ago, it rained. The rain washed minerals into the water. Eventually those minerals combined in a some crazy combination that created some life form that eventually crawled out of the water up, on in, up onto the land. And over millions and millions of years, it turned into you. Or you can believe that a loving God created you and then sacrificed His Son to save you. If you are in a hopeless, desperate situation 
and you don't know anything about Jesus, you don't know anything about God, get a Bible and read all of the book of John. That's a very good place to start. If you don't have a Bible and you have access to the internet, which if you are watching this on any platform, you have access to the internet, type in Audio Bible Book of John and you can listen to it. And that's a very good place to get to know who Jesus is and get to know who God is. It's a good place to start. And maybe if you're a Christian and you were saved years ago and you're struggling, that's a good place to start to come back to Him. But it really is as simple as believing. And all you have to do is take your heart to that cross. And you have to admit that you have sinned. Like I said, all of us have. You have to believe. And I promise you there is far more evidence for the God that sacrificed Himself for you than there is for what the world is teaching. Because that evidence is in the life of every single Christian who has ever taken their heart to the cross. When you see me, you are seeing evidence that what God did, that Jesus' sacrifice on that cross, was real. Because I should not be here. It is only by the grace of God and through the power of my Lord and Savior that I am standing here talking to you today. You go to the cross and you simply pray, Lord God, I know I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for what I've done. I need your forgiveness. I want you to come into my heart. I want to give you my life. I want to follow you as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's literally all it takes. You use your own words. You can use that. God knows everything you've done. And it doesn't matter. He's already forgiven it. All you have to do is ask. And when you do that, you tell the world that Jesus is your Lord. You do your best not to do those things that you're doing now. And God will clean it up. He'll help you clean up every mess in your life. And He will bring you where He wants you to be if you just trust Him. Get a Bible. Find some Christian friends. Find a church you can be a part of. And then find a way to serve Him. If you prayed with me today for the first time and you need a Bible, please send us an email. We are on multiple platforms now and I can't possibly keep up with all the comments. But the email address is in the, co in the content part of this, or description box. It's in the description box under the video on all the platforms. If you click on that description box, you'll find the email address. It's also on our homepage on all the platforms that we are on. So send us an email and we will send you a Bible if you need one. If you have questions, we'll do our best to answer them. If you comment on this video and I don't see it, the Hillbilly Kitchen is a Christian community and people who watch the videos, somebody else, somebody other than me will answer you if they see it. And I want to ask all the people who regularly watch this channel, please keep an eye out on the comment section under this video and help answer those questions because I can't find them all. I don't see them all. Um, and if you prayed that prayer, please know that we are praying for you. Know that your life has changed. You are now a child of the living God. If you have been saved for a long time and God has blessed you, I just want to remind you to be a blessing to somebody else. I want to wish you all a very happy Easter. I hope that you all find the true meaning of this holiday. It is about 
Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. It is about the greatest gift the world has ever known. It is about our eternal salvation. It is about that peace that passes all understanding. A love that is greater than any man has ever known. Thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.